Can the Republican Party get away from making guns an I, idol? I, listen, I certainly hope so. You know, my family's originally from northeastern Pennsylvania. I grew up with guns my entire life. Every Friday after Thanksgiving, my dad was out shooting things. Uh, so I'm a big Second Amendment person, but I think the NRA, in my opinion, is now an emperor without clothing. And so you, it's hard pressed for me to understand why we can't have background checks, red flag laws, and secure guns more safely, even digitize them so that only people that own them and are licensed for them can use them. There's so many different things that we can do that preserve the integrity of the Second Amendment and keep our children and people that are innocent in a shopping mall or a Walmart safe. So uh, what I'm astonished by is the unbelievable cowardice in the Republican Party, for that matter, and I am a fellow Republican, but I think these guys are a joke. They twist themselves into anti am pretzels every time there's a massacre or a shooting. Why can't we just own the problem and come up with the right policy as opposed to get in our corners of left and right? So, so for me, I'm a Second Amendment person, grew up with guns, want normal people to recreationally be able to use them or, God forbid, if necessary, to protect themselves. But this is total nonsense now, and hopefully we, we can solve it. The, the president yesterday spoke from the White House eloquently, I thought, about the problem. And part of what he pointed to was the anger among young men, basically, uh, because it's overwhelming men who are involved in this. Does the president bear any responsibility for his use of language on this subject? Oh. Could he, will he modify the way he expresses himself? Okay, so he's obviously his own communications director. I was one of them. I was only there for a short period of time, but he went through six of them. So he's his own communications director, so only he can really answer that. But here's what I would say to the president. He certainly doesn't bear responsibility for the mass shootings any more than President Obama did when those were happening under his realm. But he can dial down the rhetoric, okay? He is the successor of Abraham Lincoln. And he can choose his words more carefully. He controls the news cycle and the bully pulpit. And as the leader of the free world, and what Lincoln said about our country, the last best hope for mankind, he could be more thoughtful in terms of how he's handling himself at some of these rallies or some of the tweets that he's sending out that can be perceived as incendiary. And I would just say to him, whether you think they're in sedentary or not, why give your adversaries that sort of ammo going into 2020? So I hope he dials it back, uh, but ultimately it's going to be his decision, David. No one else is going to be able to influence him on that. What legacy does he want for himself? Has he thought about that? And what legacy do you think he will have? Well, I think it's too soon to call a legacy here. Uh, he probably doesn't think about that much, but I think it, uh, if you step back from things, uh, he would probably want there to be more trade symmetry with the world. Uh, we were probably out of sync for a little bit of a period of time. He would want more growth in uh, lower income and middle income families, and he would certainly want a safer and more secure world as it relates to our national defense and our, you know, our national security military policy. So I think those are the pillars of the president's agenda. Uh, but I think it's just too close right now. We, we need 50 years to really mm -hmm. observe it. What I hope the legacy won't be is that the rhetoric uh, uh, caused a tinderbox to get struck of a lot of racial tension and unnecessary anxiety in the country. I think the president's going to win one way or another, but let's win with a unity message uh, rather than one that's divisive.